as we were discussing the chapter landforms and their evolution. Under that, we have taken up till now the two agents of gradation which help in the formation of the different types of the landforms. One which we have done is the work of the river and the second we have taken up the underground water. And we have already discussed the different types of erosional features and depositional features framed by these two agents of gradation. And children, now we will be taking up the another most important agent of gradation that is the moving ice, which is also known as glacier. In the areas of high altitudes in the mountains and the high latitudes in the polar areas, the temperature is below the freezing point and precipitation is in the form of snowfall. Now, what is a glacier process? Like river, a glacier does the work of erosion, transportation and deposition on the surface of the earth and forms variety of landforms. Now, first we take up the erosional work of glacier. Like pure water, pure ice is least erosive. Glacier ice is always loaded with the rock material from top to bottom. So this material always acts as erosive tool to glacier. It helps the ice in scratching or plucking the rocks with which the rocks get polished. Now children, we will be talking about the various landforms which are formed by glaciers. For example, crevasses, cirque, horn, col, combridge, fjord, u-shaped valley and the sheep rocks which are also known as the Roche mountain. Now one by one we will be talking about that how these erosional features are formed. So first we take up crevasses. There is unequal movement of ice in a glacier. The top of ice moves much faster than its bottom and the ice in the center also moves faster than the ice along the sides of the glacier. So on the screens you can have a visual of crevasses that how these deep gullies are formed when the ice moves loaded with the different sizes of the pebbles and the rock material. Now the cracks marked on the glacier because of the splitting up of the ice as a result of its unequal movement. Now we take up another feature which is very important and is known as cirque. So cirque is a steep walled rock basin on the side of an armchair. So children, as we talk about the armchair means the easy chair which has a depression in the center and the sides are very steep. The cirque feature also looks like that. It is open on one end and has a flat bottom and very steep slopes on three sides. Now the another feature which we take up is horn. When several cirques erode, cutting a mountain back towards a common height from the different sides, it's a pyramidal peak is formed and that pyramidal shape is known as a horn. So that means in a way this feature is also formed by when the cirques they just cut the mountain back towards each other and the height is almost the common giving a shape of a horn. Now this picture, this visual gives you the shape of the horn. You can see on your screens that how the horn looks like and there is also some cirques are also visual on this screen. And by the side of the horn and the cirque, there is another feature which is known as a moraine, which we will be discussing up 
when we take up the depositional feature formed by the circ. Now, the next feature is call or that is also known as a pass. When the two circs from the opposite sides of a hill develop and meet each other, a pass is formed. Many passes in the Alps. Alps means it's a mountain in the Europe. So when we say that the many passes in the Alps were formed by the glacier action, and some of these passes are used for the transportation as well. So children, you must be aware about the term pass in geography. So pass is a low-lying area in the mountain through which you can cross over the mountain. So such passes are very common in the mountain Alps, which is situated in the European continent. Now the another feature is comb bridge. As the name indicates, it looks like a comb. So when the cirques from the two sides of the mountain ridge are enlarged and they extend towards each other, the ridge top is eroded. So that erosion is because of the extension of the cirques. So when the top gets eroded, then what happens? It takes a shape of a comb and that feature is known as a comb ridge. So here on the screens, you can see the visual. The top of the mountain ridge, which has given a shape of a comb because of the erosion done by the cirques or the enlargement of the cirques, the top gets eroded and gives a shape of a comb ridge. Another feature formed is fjord, the glacier troughs. So when I say troughs, troughs means again that low lying area which is formed by the glacier. So the glacier troughs formed near the sea get filled in by the sea water giving rise to the fjords. So that means the depression which is created by the glacier when that gets filled up with the sea water that is known as a fjord. So here on the screens you can see this feature which gives a shape of a fjord. Now we take up another feature that is known as V-shaped valley. So dear children, you must be remembering when we were discussing the work of the river, we discussed about the V-shaped valley which is formed by the river. Now here, by the glacier or the moving ice, we are discussing the U-shaped valley. So that means the U means the V gets converted into U. So the mountain glacier cannot dig a new valley, but deepens and straightens the valley by eliminating the irregularities during its passage. So such a trough has steep sides and wider flow. So V-shaped valley formed by the river turns into the U-shaped valley. Now, this visual on your screens, you can see this valley shows you the shape of a U-shape. Now, we take up another feature which is known as a sheep rock. So children, why this feature is known as a sheep rock? Like the sheep looks like from the top with the wool on its back. The same type of the feature is formed, which is known as a sheep rock. So when the glacier rides over the hard rocks on its way, while ascending the hard rock, its main action is that of abrasion. So as a result, the slope becomes very smooth, polished and gentle. And while on the other hand, plucking is the main activity when the glacier descends down on the other side, giving it a shape of a rough side and the steep sided shape is known as a sheep rock. So now we'll be talking about the depositional work of the river. Moraines, drumlins, cattle holes, these are few features which are formed 
by the depositional work of the glacier. So first we take up the moraines which are formed by the glacier. So naturally the deposition will take place after the melting of the glacier. So when the glacier melts, it starts depositing its sediments known as the moraine. Moraines consist of the heterogeneous rock material. So when I say heterogeneous, so that means those sediments can be the glacier floor, can be the angular stones or the boulders of different sizes. Now we talk about the different types of the moraines. One, the lateral, number two, medial moraine, and number three, the terminal moraines. Now this picture shows you the different features formed by the glacier. Horn is there, cirque is also you can see on the screens, as well as the medial moraine and the lateral moraines are also seen on this picture. Later moraine, when the moraine deposited on the either side of the glacier is known as the lateral moraine. Medial moraine, when the two moraines join, lateral means from the opposite side, when they join, they form the medial moraine. Terminal moraine, moraine dropped at the end of the valley glacier is in the form of a ridge, which is known as a terminal moraine. So that means this is a point where it ends and it starts taking another shape. Now the another feature is the drumlins. These are the peculiar type of the low round hill locks which resemble the shape of an inverted boat. So children, inverted boat means a high area but the height is not great. These are smooth and elongated hillocks of the boulder clay. So children, on your screens, you can have a view of the drumlins, which resemble like a inverted boat, which is not very high, but very smooth area. And the last, we'll be taking up the cattle holes. This is again a depositional feature. Usually what happens when the glacier melts, the pebbles, and the other fragments are found lying over the glacier. And when the glacier melts, these sediments, they subside and form a small depression. These depressions are called the cattle holes. And a large number of cattle holes are found in the prairies of North America. So when I take the term prairies, so that means is a temperate grassland of North America. So on your screens, you can have a visual of the cattle holes. So that means again the depression area. So children, till now we have discussed about the work of the moving ice, which is also known as glacier. And this work is only prominent in the high altitude areas and high latitude areas where the snow fall is more than the rate of the snow melting which results into the accumulation of the snow and finally the formation of the glacier in such areas. So the features we have done are the erosional as well as the depositional features created by the glacier and resulting into the different types of the landforms. Thank you children. Mm -hmm.